<laughs> Welcome back to Brews with the Homies. This is your host, Brews with D, bro. On this episode, we've got a special guest. We met Mr. Jesse over here at Beer Zombies, and he's got a pretty cool talent that he's going to talk to us about. Um, on this episode, we're going to be talking about me. We're going to talk about Jesse's journey. But before we get to that, I just want to say thank you guys for all your support lately on social media, all the reviews, everything that you guys have been doing for us we really do appreciate it um you can find us on youtube instagram and facebook at bruise with the homies our instagram tag is bruise wth don't forget to follow us don't forget to tag us with what you're drinking we'll share it or if you're at a brewery and you want us to see it tag us we'll reshare it and say what's up yeah. but fellas how's it going hey pretty good um uh, we've been Hanging out, you know, we've done a couple shares since the last couple of episodes. We did one yesterday at Beer Zombies, Heron and Tiger kind of had a little share and it was Bruce Clues, Dylan's birthday. So we went down there, supported him. So it was a fun time. Um, kind of transitioning into this episode, we're super excited to have Jesse on and to share his knowledge with you guys about me, kind of his uh, philosophy everything that he's learned throughout his journey and we're gonna try one of his meets and react to it and give him some feedback so we're excited to share that journey with you guys and talk about that one so Jesse we'll let you take the floor um, kind of give us a quick introduction of how you got into craft beer and then what made you pursue mead and go down that path uh, yeah thanks for having me on guys um, I kind of got into craft beer just Drinking with friends underage like everybody does. Yeah. Uh, kind of got introduced to it with uh, Deschutes or kind of like macro oh, okay. lagers and things like that. Yeah. Um, kind of just went from there. Started, you know, trolling Total Wine like everybody does. Yeah. And, uh, just drinking random stuff here and there. Uh, and I kind of just went on there from the years. Um, you know, started making Cali trips and getting a little bit more into it. Uh, and then I kind of discovered mead out in, uh, out in California. Uh, I think mead is a little bit more interesting, uh, at least to me, than beer is. Not to put beer down, yeah. but uh, I just enjoy mead more. I think it's a little more versatile. Um, and eventually I just decided to start brewing, and um, that's kind of what led me to this. Uh, and thankfully I you know, had all the support of you guys and a lot of locals and everything like that. And I've kind of just ran with it and had a lot of fun doing it. And um, yeah, I look forward to sharing this with you guys. So, so uh, I appreciate have, it. I do have a question, because... We, uh, I, know, I don't think you kind of, I don't think anybody's really asked you. How long have you been brewing beads for? Uh, about two years. Two, two years? years? Okay. Two years and some change. Nice. Uh, I think it took me a long time to kind of hit my stride. Um, this is probably one of the meads I'm the most happy with, to okay. be honest with you. Nice. It, it took me that long uh, just with trial and error and just learning, talking to people, um, getting feedback uh, and that kind of stuff. So. Uh, thankfully, I've had pretty good feedback on this one so far, so I'm pretty hopefully you guys will enjoy it. But even then, any criticism is always welcome. I'm always hey. trying to improve and see what I can change. And hey, that's what we like to hear, there, you so. know. Open to feedback, try some new things. Mm -hmm. And this one, if you want to introduce it, what's this one, what's in it, and kind of what was the inspiration <laughs> to create this one? Um, so that is a traditional mead made with orange blossom honey. So... Um, Orange Blossom, even though it sounds like it's going to be really sweet and um, kind of full uh, flavor, it's actually a pretty light honey, um, but it does, has a, it does have a lot of notes of um, kind of oranges, a lot of citrus, a lot of floral notes, but it is pretty light. It's pretty thin as far as honey goes. Um, and I was trying to try out some new yeast. So what I used with that actually was some uh, Kvike yeast, which is traditionally used for beer. So um, lighter lagers, generally speaking. Um, the fun thing about that is that it ferments pretty quickly and heavily. Um, and that particular strain, which is a Voskovic yeast, um, gives off a lot of citrus and floral notes. Nice. So I thought that would complement the honey pretty well. And it doesn't actually eat up all of the sugar. Um, and so what it did was leave behind a fair bit of the sugar from the honey. So um, it's categorized as a sweet mead. I don't think it's overly sweet, but it yeah. does leave a lot behind. And so um, it finished, um, I want to say around 13%. You'd have to check the label. I don't actually remember. Yeah, 10.9. Um, um, okay, so not too boozy. Um, I don't think the alcohol really comes through much at all. Uh, I love the color on it. And it, uh, yeah, I can't. 
came through nice and clear. Not as clear as I would have liked it, but you know. So from the process of like brewing this style of meat, it's like how long did it take you with the fermenting and everything? Um, well, for this batch, it took about a month. Um, I didn't handle the yeast as well as I should have, um, just because I wasn't super knowledgeable on it at the time. I know a lot more now. Um, but it took about a month, which is a pretty good turnaround for mead, and especially a mead that becomes drinkable like this immediately. Uh, a lot of the batches that I've had, even though they've turned out really well, take at least four to five months, if not longer, oh, to, wow. to become drinkable. This was, as soon as it was done, when it still had sediment in it, I could drink it right away. I sat there and pulled some out of the fermenter and drank it. Nice. And that's when I knew I had stumbled upon something really nice. Um, so this has been one of my more favorite things that I've made. So um, a couple weeks ago at the uh, Boulder City share with uh, Josh, you brought one of your yes. own. And let me tell you, that brought me back to some of the meads I've had before, and I really enjoyed it. So I'm really looking forward to having this one. Yeah, I've checked that one in on my Untapped uh, so people could see it. That one was, um, now I'm gonna blank on the name of the show, but it had uh, Letter Kenny, right? Yeah, it was a Letter Kenny label. Yeah, so yeah. a lot of people like that one. I know um, Zach was one of the people that talked about your meads, and I know he gets mm -hmm. them from you, and we yeah. just had him on the previous episode, so it was cool to, like, Put that together too because he was telling us how much he loved it so to be able to have you on and then try this together is awesome kind of everything comes full circle in yeah, vegas definitely. like it's a s small city the more people you know you kind of like start making those connections so it's really cool but let's get some kind of let's get smell some, it get like get the notes in. and let's Aaron, try it out. what are you picking up on the smells it's floral yeah for sure like you get a little citrus floral on the nose i dig it you know because like it reminds me too like it's gonna be sweet like even just off the nose you guys are te tempting me i'm gonna just go for You're it up, there. Cheers. there you go cheers guys cheers so now i kind of understand what you're saying about how that dryness on there mm. is there but with the sweetness like you're not getting like a dry unsweet you're getting like the sweet but the dry and throughout what i like to explain on the podcast when we're talking about certain beers that i really enjoy or even like barley wine stouts where you get that full flavor profile as you're drinking it so like when you first get it there's that rush of flavor and then as you let it sit on your palate and then take it in and the retro nasal like i get all this experience flavor so i'm definitely get the floral I kind of get that like citrusy orange on it and I'm pretty particular when it comes to like dryness because usually I'm not the biggest fan of it but I think on this one with that balance of sweetness it keeps it refreshing but not overly sweet and that's what I really like about it especially when you get into mead sometimes I've had some that were like way too dry or sometimes way too sweet but this one has that like good balance and I think at 10%, almost 11%, a lot of people could see themselves like just drinking this as a nice, like refreshing meat. It doesn't have to be like a certain time of year that you have to drink it. It's a pretty overall drink at any season type you of know, thing. Our bread man over here should have brought some sourdough because this would have been <laughs> hand in hand. Because I, I really like this. It's like kind of what Chris said before on the, the previous episodes. When you see a beer and it like advertises, floral it advertises blood orange it advertises honey You're like you expect to taste those and all those flavors are met in this and it's like balanced it's not one's overbearing than the other it's like really balanced and really smooth even though it's like dry so like heron i want to hear your thoughts on this and what you feel and then jesse i want you to take us through like the tasting as a, like that whole tasting process to how you went from creating it to like how you wanted it to taste and then to like what it actually tastes like. Cause I okay. feel like when I drink this, I could see kind of like a vision of you wanted it to taste a certain way in the beginning, kind of like balance in the middle and then end on a certain note. And then I would love to hear what you would want to improve on in this one. So Heron, what, do you, so what are your thoughts? I'm actually very, I guess, shocked, impressed yeah. maybe even. Because when you think, <laughs> when you think of mead, you're just kind of like, 
I mean, I'll, I'll ask the question later of what mead actually is, but you think of, I guess, fermented honey of sorts, and it, a lot of meads are very sweet. So I'm like, okay, when I, that's kind of why I'm not like a huge fan of mead, because I see these meads that are extremely sweet, and I'm like, hey, I don't, I don't, know, if I, I don't know if I like that. I'm not a very sweet guy. But this is, this is almost like a mead for the people. A mead for everyone. Yeah. You know, if you if you enjoy a little bit of sweetness, you're gonna enjoy this, and it's not overly sweet. I mean, but it if you do like sweets, people you also gonna like it. So I don't know. It just as an idea, this is a mead unlike any other mead I've had. Nice. Like to hear it. <laughs> yeah, because like the one thing I always find myself going back to when we have meat is I like to refer to it like if you like wine and like appreciate wine then it should be a pretty easy jump to get into meat and like meat and appreciate the different things about it and for me when I used to drink wine I think that was something I appreciate the, the ability to have like a dryness like a sweetness and still like a little bit of alcohol taste to where it all complements each other very well but I feel like this is easier to get down and easier to enjoy. So we'll kick it back to you, Jesse, about that process and your thoughts on everything. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like, well, I don't drink a lot of wine, but with a little wine I've had, I feel like mead becomes a little more palatable just like getting into it at first. Yeah. Um, but I do think there is kind of bit, uh, a bit of a leap, I guess, like to where you can kind of go sideways and go into mead because this reminds me of a lot of the, the lighter yeah. like white wines that I've had and, um, but like I said before I didn't necessarily get into mead because I enjoyed wine um, it was kind of one of those weird natural progression things just you're in craft beer and then you hear about mead or there's a meadery down the street and you go and check it out yeah you kind of get into it that way but um, this one was a it was a happy experiment I guess yeah. um, because uh, I read up on the yeast beforehand. I already knew what orange blossom tasted like. Um, and just the, the profiles seemed like they would go hand in hand. I didn't treat the yeast as well as I should have, but thankfully uh, Quebec yeast is very uh, robust and sturdy. So even though I kind of screwed it up in the beginning, it ended up working out, Yeah, which I was very happy with. Um, the next time I kind of know what I need to do. Um, uh, as far as nutrients goes, um, uh, if you're just making a base mead, um, there's not very much nutrient-wise in um, honey as far as, um, you know, the, your natural compounds and things like that, as opposed to if you're making wine, you got grapes, you got all the skins and all the juices, yeah. all the compounds and everything in there that kind of helps it ferment. Or with beer, there's a lot of good stuff in the malt and barley and all that that the, the yeast can kind of work with. But exactly. um, with, uh, with honey, there's not a lot to go on. So you kind of have to add nutrients in a certain way. Um, but this specific yeast, they kind of like everything up front and that's not what I did, but I helped them out yeah. a little bit and it got there eventually, it got going. Um, it took a little longer than expected, um, but uh, it ended up pretty good um, in the long run. I was pretty happy with it. Uh, I, what I would like to do with this eventually is just, I, I'm pretty sure I can recreate the same thing. Yeah. Um, I want to age it on some oak. Um, just to bring out a little more tannin, um, give it a little fuller body, because like you guys are saying, I know it's a little bit dry, um, yeah. and it finishes on the palate pretty clean, and it lingers a little bit there, but I think it could coat the tongue a little more, Yeah, have a little more of a body to it, and then maybe add some vanilla, just some straight Ooh. vanilla yeah. to it, just to kind of balance out that citrus and do like a, you know, orange sickle kind of yeah, flavor I get that, profile. Yeah. Because the, the honey works well uh, with the yeast, and there's plenty of citrus in there, but I think maybe something else could be present, you know. To but, balance I, but, it out. but I was really happy with this, like as a base mead. Like, I yeah. don't think there's, I don't, I'm trying to toot my own horn, but I don't think <laughs> there's much wrong with it. Like, I'm happy with how it came out. So, well, I'll definitely make this again just as is. I, I definitely do gotta say, man, you, you knocked this one out the park. Um, you know, James isn't here, so yeah. we can't ask James what his famous rating is. So I think we got to ask Heron. Heron, you got to do the James famous rating. Thing. All right. Yeah. So wh what do you think it is? I mean, it's everything but my underwear because I don't want to get naked. You know, like Ooh. I don't know what James's rating is. So, <laughs> yeah. I so forget, but you know, I'll keep. You want me grab a note over there? Yeah, we, got, we got the we got the rating over there. I think but. five is a nude beach in Spain. Oh. Four is a shirt and shirt and shorts. shorts. All right. Well, I already told you this is like. 
my favorite mead that I've had. So when this is brewed again, I'm definitely at least getting one bottle. Yeah, yeah we got to get my hands gotta sure. on this thing. Yeah, this um, thing is. So what would you rate it on on top? Like yeah. what? Because you already said. You... I mean, I usually I, I just haven't had enough mead. I don't yeah. know. This is like this. So this is the it, best in my one. eyes, this is like you know. 10 out of 10, 5 out of 5, this is yeah. the best meat I've had, so I don't, I don't know what to do. Man, but, well, I mean, go. we've had other meat, but, like, they've had, like, sugars and, and fruits and stuff in there. And they're, they're, yeah, they're so very, different, different very different from different. this. I think this Especially is very... Especially the forest meat. We yeah, had, like, yeah. traditional meat. Yeah. The, the guava meat like, that we this, had was very different. So, I, I mean, I agree with Heron here. You're getting something that, when you go into it, if you haven't had a lot of meat, you're going to be like, well... What am I expecting? Am I going to be getting something that I don't like? Because we've had meads we haven't liked before. We've had some really good mead from Horace. And um, I think Honey Pot was the other one we've had before. And I would say, especially for a base mead with no additional like fruits added or anything, like it's stand out. It's something where like if I went to Superstition, because I went there um, and tried a bunch of their stuff, like I, if I had this there, I'd be for sure. Like this is something that I'd be like, wow, this is impressive. This is something that I would buy, you know, bottles of to go. And I think my girlfriend would have loved it too. So I think I would rate it on Untapped, based off of everything we've said and come down to it. I would say 4.8 for the simple fact that you're exciting me with the improvements that you want to make or <laughs> to have it, you know, with the oak and like maybe add some vanilla. I think there's that potential to jump one more step up. So I think that's amazing, but I couldn't recommend it more. And I would definitely, if we start getting more from you, when we do shares, we'll hopefully have more stuff to share with everyone that comes down to our shares. So that'd be something cool to look forward to in the future. Sure. Can so, I say, my man, this is a solid five. I. I enjoy it. It's everything that you said it was and gonna be. I really enjoyed it. Nice. This is something that like is perfect. Like I, I mean, when you say you're gonna add oak and vanilla to it, it just like got me super excited. Like, uh, yeah, and I mean I'm planning on doing probably another five gallon batch for that. So once I do, I'll definitely get you all a bottle and yeah, tell yeah, me how this shit is. Cause yeah, that was something. Um, Dustin really went into on one of our episodes and me and him got really passionate about it is there's some beers some styles of everything where it's the full picture right like you have the bottle here you have the artwork and you get the orange right there the flower so like you know what you're expecting it hits all the notes you talked about and so from like a perspective if you saw this on a shelf okay honey thief me like you look at it all right 10.9 percent you're like, okay, I want something that I could taste the alcohol, but it's gonna be refreshing, it's not gonna be too much. And then you see simply orange. Okay, you see the flowers, and then you see the orange. And so now you're thinking, okay, well, I'm expecting citrus, I'm expecting floral. And then once you taste it and get all those notes, it makes it the full experience. You're like, okay, now the marketing meets the product, and now you're like enjoying it even more because everything matches up. Yeah, it, matches, had, it matches up and like, not even just mat, like flavor yeah. wise. And <laughs> like, it's 10.9. Well, drinking that, I wouldn't think it's a 10.9. I, I wouldn't. I would think it's like something less, but yeah. it's delicious. It's, if I, honest, honestly, yeah. if we could have taken this to the golf course with us on Saturday, I don't think I would have been as hot. Yeah, because like it's refreshing. It's so, like, so refreshing. That's one thing we talk about too is stuff like this. I know mead can turn some people off because we talked about this in the past that Heron's brought up is price point to entry because of the fact that sometimes mead can be expensive to make. Is that something that you've had any issue with or like seeing how expensive things can get when you start to make mead or like the process? Um, it has, well, I don't want to say it's turned me off a little bit. It's slowed me down a yeah. tiny bit, but I think it's slowed me down with how creative I get and okay. like certain things that I want to do. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if we talked about it at uh, uh, Boulder City, but me and Vinny at Beer Zombies are working yep. on it. Well, we finished a collab. It's done. We're waiting on our labels. Yep. Um, nice. We, uh, I saw the uh, Instagram Yeah, story. the stories that they yeah, like yeah. making it up. With the wax dip. Oh. Yeah, so that was the most expensive batch I've made so far. The next one he wants to do, 
Um, God bless Vinny. He gives me all kinds of goofy ideas. And I, <laughs> then I just execute. But this has been the most uh, expensive one we've done so far because we bought an oak barrel, we bought a Ooh, shitload nice. of bananas, we bought a bunch of Nilla wafers, and it was a five-gallon batch. And so, but um, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. So that's kind of like at, at the end of the day, like if the product is good, and I can kind of tweak it from there and figure out how I can make it better afterwards. That's that's the most important part for me. Yeah, we love to hear that. I. So you guys heard it here first, um, that collab, you know, people are going to be breaking excited. news, breaking news, breaking news. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Because, you know, knowing Vinny, if any of you like seen when we post about him or you follow him. I mean, you've seen it, him on the episode. I yeah. Mean, I mean, yeah. Just the way he presents himself. We love him to death and he has all these great ideas. So I could only imagine the collaboration you guys came up with. And we're super excited because that just makes me now even more curious to be like, ah, what's Vinny have in mind? That's his vision. And then you're like, okay, well, I'm going to execute it. So I'm excited. Right. You, you know how to execute what you envision, but now you get to test if you could execute someone else's vision and what they yeah, want to yeah. do. Yeah, it's worked out so far, thankfully. I mm -hmm. thought I, I wasn't super, well, I was, I was a little bit shaky on his, uh, his idea at first, but yeah. it worked out, executed. Um, his next one's gonna be crazy, but I'll leave that for another time. Yes, yeah, okay. Get it figured out, but uh, yeah, new one is um, banana Nella wafers, uh, half regular, half Asian rum barrels. Ooh, uh, nice. so it was a lot of fun, a lot nice. of fun to make. Um, pretty happy with how it turned out. So yeah, that's that's exciting, man. I like it's cool to hear that you can get him to do these collabs like with Vinny and like a lot of other people. Like, have you have other people like approach you to do collabs or? Um, not too often, honestly. Yeah. Um, Vinny's been the first one who actually, he was, I mean, I have a lot of ideas, but he was the first person to kind of just get on my ass because you know how Vinny is. Yeah, he's, yeah exactly. He's yeah. passionate. He's got yeah. a lot of ideas. Um, he wants to follow through with things and, and try new stuff. So he got on my ass. He was like, hey, man, we're doing this now. We'll spend the money. We'll fucking figure it out. And, and we did it. And, you know, here we are now, uh, three months later, and I'm really happy that he push me to to do all that so that's the best part yeah. about Vinny he's persistent and he's yeah. like yeah. He, so when he, wants, he has that idea yeah, like he, he wants know. what's best for you and it, I'm I can't wait to see what everybody says about it like I'm you got you got my interest yeah because now you're wanting us to like when that comes out now we need to have you and Vinny on that episode too because he's been wanting to get back on again and yeah, have some fun like and I think that would be a fun opportunity for us to showcase that and yeah. talk about it that'd be a fun time that would be a fun time so enough about the meads let's, let's get a little bit into like you jesse like you kind of mentioned like you kind of got started drinking beer when you were kind of underage but like like but <laughs> what really got you to like your first craft beer like did you like your first craft beer did you like go what the hell is this or like um tell us that story a little bit of both, I guess. I was uh, with some friends, and um, he was really into Deschutes, and uh, he gave me a Blackview Porter. Okay. Um, and I was uh, kind of taken aback by how tasty a beer could be, um, uh, given how dark it was, I guess, because I was super unfamiliar with like, yeah. any style at the time. But I was like, oh, this looks super dark, and maybe not. Maybe it doesn't taste that good, but he gave me that, a porter, usually pretty light drinking compared to, I don't know, I guess a stout, but it was still pretty heavy for me at the time. Um, and ever since then, I've just been super interested in like different styles of beer and you know, you kind of, it's a natural progression. Yeah. You get more into stuff. I used to hate stouts and barley wines, but you know, sign me up any day of the week for, <laughs> for any of those styles, Belgian, quads, triples, I didn't really, I uh, used to like those very much, but now I pretty much just drink anything. Like if I haven't had it, I'll drink it. That's yeah. kind of where I'm at. So I'm all about craft. I love craft beverages just in general. So I think nice. it's an exciting space for sure. Nice. So. Yeah. You kind of did the same. Like it's funny because I hated stouts. Hated stouts. Hated stouts. Hated stouts. And over the last what eight nine months, yeah, these special. guys You're all like good. they they turned me. They turned me to the dark side. And ever since then, I've been in love with them and i'm kind of like in that aspect now you pour it i'll drink it so are you more along the lines of like uh like adjuncted or do you appreciate it can you appreciate a good yes normal yes 
I can appreciate it now. I'm Spons starting to get to. That. I I'm getting to that point. Like the yeah. one that we just had out there, the uh, North Park yeah. brown, the brownie. Uh, what the equilibrium? Yeah. Yeah. The walnut, the brownie. Normally, yeah. a beer like that, I would like take a sniff and be like, no, sorry. <laughs> now I can drink it and like appreciate it. I can get the flavors. I can like actually appreciate it before and i'll drink and be like oh man it's too coffee yeah like he would like be stuck on this coffee notes he hated coffee and i think what convinced him more than anything is we did the opposite instead of like giving him super adjunctive sure. we went to like horace so like when i had my like horace stouts i'd be like hey try a little bit and then we were like hey let's split a couple bottles let's all have it on here and so he was like okay this is different okay like you could start appreciating yeah. it and i think going the opposite way so instead of going from super sweet to like barrel age no right. adjuncts like he did it the opposite way and i think it made him appreciate it more and to realize okay well now i'm not getting coffee i'm getting more of a bourbon taste yeah. now i'm getting the flavors of the barrel i'm getting like this oaky chari or cherry like whatever flavors that are coming out i think that was like the key moment where you're like okay now I could see this. And then yeah. we started going backwards into more junk stuff. And he's like, now I'm getting that coffee note out of my he head and realizing, okay, that's a chocolate flavor. Okay, yeah. that's a flavor right. that I'm not opposed to. So that was a great full circle journey for you. Yeah. But one of my questions for you, because I've seen you post so many different beers and I feel like you trade for a lot of stuff. You get stuff flown in, kind of like what we do. Yeah. What are your top three breweries? Um, hmm. Top three breweries. Well, the meteries count because. Uh, yeah, the, we'll, we'll count those. Uh, we'll we'll count. All right, so we'll do this: <laughs> top two, um, craft like craft beer breweries, and the top two meteries. Um, I guess like nowadays I kind of quantify it as like by style. Okay. Um, so. And I'm, I'm sure not everyone's gonna agree with me, but as far as like um, IPAs go, I still love Monkish. Yeah. Um, consistent, always good. Can't complain about their 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 beer. I know they make a lot of the same stuff, but even their um, their different styles, like their Belgians and things like that, their saisons are just yeah. super Phenomenal. good. Phenomenal. So not even just speaking on their hazies um, and their IPAs, but the other styles they do, I think are really well executed. Um, so it's pro probably as far as like. As that goes, it's it's probably them. Yeah. Um, uh, dark beer, bottle logic, probably. Okay. Again, like they lean hard into stouts, but it's always super consistent. Yes. I feel like um, craft beer nerds are kind of coming back around. To, I think they kind of uh, threw bottle logic aside a little bit. Yeah. Didn't realize how good they are. Didn't appreciate them, but they're still they've been there all this time. Yeah. Always yeah. making solid stouts. Um, trying to think of a third brewery that I really enjoy. Um, well, as far as meteries go, um, uh, Honey Pot, yep. definitely my favorite meadery. Um, Lost Cause down in San Diego is also super awesome, Not so right. I'd say those top two. I know people have their, their favorites. There's yeah. Pips on the East Coast, Garage East. Yes. There's uh -huh. a lot of yeah, meteries yeah. all across the country that are super good. Um, maybe Great Notion. Okay, great, yeah. Great Notion, Notion makes mm -hmm. a lot of really fun stuff. Um, their blueberry muffins, pro as simple as it is, is probably one of my favorite, uh, just like light ales yeah. um, that I've ever had. I remember my first sip at their tap room. It was yeah. fantastic. They make a lot of really fun stouts, a lot of good like breakfast pastry stouts. So I'd say those five are probably like overall oh. been like the most consistent throughout the last you know, however many years I've been nice. drinking. So. Yeah. Do you guys uh, have any similarities? Yeah. Uh, across uh, those ones, I mean. I would. Uh, speaking yeah. of monkish. Yeah. Yeah. Here, <laughs> what we're having playful beer's name is playful. The guy looks this? pretty playful. Uh, <laughs> American blonde ale. Yeah, he's. Uh, we're gonna throw him on the screen right now. He looks pretty wild. But yeah, monkish. We all love yeah, monkish. I think yeah. it's yeah. unanimous. That's yeah. clear. Yeah. Once, uh, once you said monkish, I was like, yeah, yeah. this is unanimous. <laughs> from yeah. I like. It, it, Monkish stance here, I yeah. guess you can say. Well, it's just because <laughs> not only do they do great IPAs and hazies, they're other styles. Like, I feel like everyone kind of just forgets about everything else they do. Let me tell you, like, every time you go there, you can find 
something that fits you. Um, a lot of their like saisons when they do anniversary events or any kind of special releases, you don't want to miss out on those. You want to try all of them. Um, their heart, their seltzers are incredible. I think they have the best seltzers. I'll talk about it all the time. Me and my girlfriend love it. We went with Heron. Didn't and they Karina. just didn't they just announce a seltzer like raffle or lottery system? I don't know. They just announced something. Oh, it was like, like the tops thing. So yeah. like no, so that's a collaboration. Like they're kind of like if you've ever heard what are those um, tops and oh now I'm gonna have to look it up, but. Uh, I social media yeah i saw that they posted i know what you're talking about it was pretty cool that they did um oh the garbage pail kits so they're featured as one of their like special like top um 20 of the most innovative and esteemed breweries to participate so it was a cool little thing that they did but yeah their beers every time i go i try to mix it up try their different styles uh, Heron and I love like when they do Belgians on one of our bite episodes we featured feminists yep. which is a Belgian triple and Don't if you ever get the chance, please try them. Please try their other styles Don't just stick on their hazies like you want to try everything they have to offer even their stouts can be incredible um, Another one that a lot of people kind of rank mid I do like great notion I think they've had a lot of great stuff, but they do a lot so yeah. I can understand how people kind of get lost in the sauce of the great ones here and there, but you got to still appreciate when they do something so great and simple, yet it's repeatable and can be mass produced. Sure. That's hard. Like, you think about it, you could produce something small scale and it could be amazing, but to mass produce that and to ship it out and give it to so many places, it's hard to do. So, we love to see that. And for mead wise, I've only had like, I think once or twice honey pot, so I can't really talk about that too much, but I've had Horace Mead um, a few times. I've really enjoyed their stuff. And everyone knows that I love Horace and stand by a lot of their stuff. So I think kind of when we get a lot of people that appreciate craft beer and have had a lot, your top five will usually interchange with a lot of people. Like a lot of people appreciate the same breweries and then it goes to personal preference at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I mean, and as far as what I drink nowadays, it's kind of, it's I, like I still, those are probably still my top three, but I yeah. like my style of choice has probably shifted a lot more towards lighter beer. Like I enjoy a lot of the local like light lagers yeah. that I can find. It's mm-hmm. just, I just want to drink something light, crisp, refreshing. That's kind of, yeah. but this is all super fun in the interim, you know, yeah. just to have, try some stuff with you guys and the beer zombies and share some more interesting beer. Yeah, because like when you come full circle, I think that's Heron's talked about it before too. Is we appreciate now more than ever those light, like oh, yeah. light boys. Like we oh, want yeah. something. Even this beer's light. Yeah, this yeah. one, yeah. crispy boys. Like this one's only four point five percent. Nice goes good right after the me. Like you just want something refreshing. We talk about all the time, like what can we have on the golf course that doesn't affect our game, but at the same time we can enjoy. Like, I, sure. You, the Mexican lager that you put me on. Yes. That oh, was, so whew. Matt's a huge fan of uh, Prim, all their stuff. Like they have yeah. great beers. They do all the styles. So we did the Mexican lager. I mean, we uh, we had the Colts too. Yeah, the so yeah, yeah. We just love to mix it up because we've been as much as my favorite style I'll still stand by is Triple IPA. And that's surprising for a lot of people because that's my favorite. But right after that, it's stout. But then now I'm back to the realm of if I'm not drinking those two, give me all the lager, pilsner. I want every style. Like, give me the light, enjoyable things that have a little variance. And I love when people take those and do like a little twist on it or like add a little something. So that's kind of where I've landed. So this is a meat episode. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna back. we're gonna have a bite episode about me soon. You'll check that out. But mm-hmm. I have a question. Ooh, my yeah. student mode is uh, lighting up. What what exactly is me? Because we didn't really dive into yeah. what me actually is in its most basic element. What is a me? Um, it is very basic, uh, even though it can be very complex. So it's just honey, water, and yeast. Nice. That is basically what it is at its roots. Um, I don't know when it sprang up, but uh, mm. it is the world's most uh, is the world's oldest uh, fermented beverage. So nice. it goes back thousands of years. Um, 
couldn't really give you the, the full origin story, but yeah. uh, I know it's old. Um, I know it's been passed down through many generations, and um, I'm, I'm happy to see it like resurging nowadays, yeah. especially because, um, you know, there's the whole beer scene, but I feel like there's a, a big meme scene kind of coming up uh, out of those, you know, beer nerds all of us yeah, sitting here. You kind of get bored, you want to experiment and have fun. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's what it is at its base. That's all it is, and that's all that was, was Honey Water and Yeast. And yeah. so that's all you need to make something that that's, I mean, you guys seem to enjoy it. I enjoy mm -hmm. it, but made something that enjoyable just out of those three things. So. Wait, so no adjuncts in here. Yeah. I mean, the, all no, floral notes yeah. are just... Um, so different yeasts, there's so many different kinds of yeasts. I'm not going to sit here and list them all, yeah. but yeah. they can all give off different esters, different okay. essences. And so um, I don't want to be quoted on this. I want to say a lot of these um, Kvike strains are um, out of, I think a lot of them are Norwegian, so that kind of area. Okay. I guess they're specific to that area, but again, don't quote me on that. But um, this one specifically um, has been tested and shown to give off a lot of those citrus and floral notes nice. that you guys are getting. So nice. um, it's not necessarily completely reliant on like the honey and whatever adjuncts you put in it. The yeast plays a huge role in what you're getting out of the back end. So, I mean, I have a, a triple berry right now that I'm working on that um, uses um, a specific wine yeast that is super good for fruit, so it gives off a lot of fruity esters. Um, so it's, it's kind of strange to think about in that way, but um, even if it's not the exact thing you're trying to get out of it, whatever yeast you're using can kind of help, help, help your meat along to, to kind of Healthy end product, so yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> humans and bees have been friends for a long time, and they what should the, be in perpetuity because bees are very important. What about the yeah. killer bees? What, <laughs> no. what about this new killer right, bee? You know? know, what about the bees that make hallucinogenic honey? <laughs> oh, right? oh, what about oh, those guys? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that's a whole, that's a whole nother rabbit hole that you can try oh, to yeah. get into. Yeah. Like, like, I don't think we got enough time to get in that rabbit hole. Probably not. Yeah. So, so we'll <laughs> wrap this up. Um, I got you. I got you. Right. Because okay. Heron mentioned this, yes. and he left out a couple key details. The bite episode is going to be featuring Jesse and another one of his meats, and or his favorite meat. His favorite meat. Honey pot. I wish it was mine, but it's not. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> you know, I, I you know, I was going to try to. Yeah. Throw, throw. I'm glad uh, you were on us on that one. Yeah. So, they'll, they'll notice when they see the little. Yeah, uh, it's, all right. <laughs> it's all right. But like I said, you can find us on YouTube. You can tag us with what you're drinking on Instagram at Brews. W T H. You'll see what we're drinking. We'll cheers you. And if you got any recommendations to what to have on the podcast or a brewery to go see, I'm heading to Ohio here in September. So if you got any breweries that are in the Columbus or Thorn, or is it Thornville? Thorn, yeah, Thornville. Send them my way. Yeah. But until next time, later. Yeah. Cheers. And don't forget bite episode coming up next. And um, I'll be traveling to Anaheim. So if you want ideas too, send it to. Me, send him for Columbus, Ohio, all that stuff, and we'll get you covered on both ends. Yeah, so, later we got guys, you covered on both yeah. sides. Cheers.